Joy Con Drift. If you have owned a Nintendo Switch long enough, chances are you have likely run into this issue, specifically if you use your Joy Cons a lot. This happens obviously when you're playing in handheld mode, using the Joy Con grip, etc. Um, for those of you that just mostly play docked with the Pro Controller, this probably isn't something you've noticed. Although, if you happen to see some drift with the Pro Controller, it's possible this could fix this too. Uh, but Joy-Con drift is something that I've even experienced, and I don't necessarily use my Joy-Cons a ton. I play in docked mode a lot, but every now and then, especially when I'm playing Breath of the Wild, I'll notice my Joy-Con just simply drifts and and drifting for those who don't know because maybe you've never experienced is where you are not touching your joystick but the joystick is registering movements so uh, when you go to calibrate your joystick you can really see this where you're not even touching it and it's off you know to the side or it's just bouncing all over the place this generally means the joystick is not making good contact with the contact points and as such it's registering different things and there's been many many solutions to this most of which are just temporary and when i say temporary i'm talking days things like cleaning it with a, a, a q-tip things like using a toothbrush uh, things like spraying some uh, aerosol air in there and just kind of dusting it out because it's just going to keep grinding right it's going to keep grinding and it's going to keep getting worse and the obvious solution that most have put out there is well just buy new sticks right they're not that expensive however it's kind of a crapshoot when you buy new sticks because unless you're getting official retail sticks, which generally aren't being sold on the secondhand market because, well, I mean, people have them inside their Joy-Cons and they end up being used. Uh, so you're getting these third-party manufactured sticks. They usually aren't as responsive or as high of quality of actual Nintendo sticks. Yeah, they might not grind and they might not have the drift problem, but they might not be um, as as feel as good as the original. So there's actually a solution out there that there are some people aware of this, of course, because otherwise, how would I even know about this? Uh, but the solution is very simple. It's very cheap. And it's honestly something that I don't think a lot of people know about because it's not something they think about. So I came across this thread back in April on Reset Era. And it says, PSA, the last Joy-Con drift fix you'll ever need and it barely got any attention it's just a few pages long which is not very long on a forum like reset era and it's just kind of gone unnoticed and i read it and i tried it and i tried it on my drifting joy con about a week ago and unfortunately i did not film me using it uh, but i can tell you what i did in the process i did because i think this is important and i want to share it with you guys and the fact that this has already lasted a week and then other testimonials in this thread tells me that this is a viable solution to joy con drifting and that is using electrical contact cleaners so we've done a whole bunch of toothbrushes and everything else but if you use electrical contact cleaner, what ends up happening is that cleaner is actually intended to be used with switches and electronics. So it's a cleaner that is non-conductive, so it's not going to cause any issues. This is one thing people have when they want to use certain cleaners as they're worried about you know, electricity and, and ruining parts. Well, this won't ruin that. It's intended for use in this case. However, uh, it, you really should be getting, in my opinion, the fast drying electrical contact cleaner. There is a WD-40 version of the fast drying electrical contact cleaner that's really easy to find at all your local retailers, even on Amazon. And you know what? Down in the description, I'll put a link to the exact one I used and then a link to some other off-brand ones if you would rather use a different brand. And I'll list the prices there. They're, they're all basically around $5. It's, it's really that simple. Uh, and what you do is there's a little rubber flap underneath uh the joy con but above the ball so if, if you ever look at your joy con control and i'm showing a picture right now um there is a there is a rubber flap and a ball so what you want to do is like pull the joy con to the side lift that rubber flap up you know you can use you know whatever a flathead a little flathead screwdriver that's what i did uh or you could use uh you know a, a little knife whatever you happen to have that can actually get underneath that little rubber flap it's not that hard to move um and you lift it up and then you put on the uh on the content on the electrical contact cleaner you put the little red straw in and you spray like one little spray on one side of it and then i did it on the other side as well lift up the flap and put another spray because when you lift up that flap you'll actually be able to spray down into the ball 
mechanism. And uh, then, then you want to take your joystick and you kind of want to twirl it around in a 360 for about 30 seconds. Now, I did it with three fingers. You can just do it with the one finger if you want. Uh, it was just less cumbersome for me to do it 30 seconds in a row, uh, just kind of grabbing it from the top and spinning it. But uh, after doing that for, for 30 seconds, I then, because uh, it was fast drying, it only takes about five minutes to dry, I just let the Joy-Con sit for about five minutes. This is just a general safety note. It should be usable right away, technically. Uh, but it is fast drying for a reason. Uh, and after it dried, I put it back on and I have not had any drifting issues since. And this testimonial is true of everyone. Uh, this X and, and Bosch person, uh, you know, he, he put an update post in another thread that like it's been months, many months now since April and the drift has never come back. Uh, other people have said, you know, weeks and, and all these things that they haven't had any issues. Uh, the only person who really said that they uh, had an issue that this didn't fix is one that definitely had a more severe issue than your typical Joy-Con drift. The, the, the stick was literally broken. Uh, so, you know, you might say, well, how does this prevent it from grinding? What's going on? Well, that's the thing about this kind of stuff is it, the, the contact solution actually helps with grinding and it makes everything actually move the way it's intended to move. So what ends up happening is not only are you cleaning out all the debris with this cleaner, because it is a cleaner, you are also, when it dries, making everything actually slide the way it's intended to. And yes, again, this might be something they actually use in the factories. They usually use a solution like this to help with gliding, but obviously the solution Nintendo is using in these factories, or the fa or the manufacturers, I guess, are using, I can't always just blame this on Nintendo, uh, is not lasting long enough. Um, so this is just something to keep in mind. Uh, and again, if, the, if my Joy-Con ever starts to drift, say, you know, six months, a year from now, what's, what's a couple more squirts of that gonna harm? It, it's, it's such an easy fix. You don't have to send your Joy-Cons into the Nintendo. Uh, obviously, you know, you can send them into Nintendo if you want, especially if they're under warranty, but then you got to wait when the solution is just going to happen to the new sticks. It's just going to keep happening. So this is a way, uh, a quick and easy way to fix Joy-Con drift. I can't believe, I mean, it's been... Uh, two years, you know, over two years at this point, really, for me to discover a fix for Joy-Con drift that actually permanently works. Uh, I, I guess I shouldn't say permanently. At least works as far as I can tell uh, and works better than all the other solutions out there. Again, there are other solutions, spraying aerosol cans, rubbing it with a toothbrush, uh, you know, t actually taking the mechanism apart and trying to physically clean it uh, and all this stuff. There, there's a lot of solutions out there and all of them work uh, but none of them eliminate the issue for any longer, usually than a week at most. So this is something uh, to consider. This is something that I think a lot of people might want to use to resurrect maybe some old Joy-Cons that they've replaced uh, that have just been kind of sitting on the shelf. And, you know, they're like, oh, well, when are we ever going to do something about this? Well, now you have a solution. So I implore you to, again... I'm talking quick, dry, electrical contact cleaner. Now, one thing that you might worry about, and this is something that people don't like about WD-40, is WD-40 itself, just the plain old WD-40, not any of the fancy contact cleaner or, or whatever stuff, uh, electrical contact cleaner, be very clear, it's got to be the electrical kind, uh, is that WD-40 has a smell uh, because it's oil. That, that's what WD-40 is. It's an oil, and that's what people put like on their hinges, on doors, and different mechanisms in cars and stuff like that, You know, because it's an oil, and you can use it on that kind of stuff. Uh, but it, it stinks, and obviously you don't want your Joy-Con to stink. What is nice about the electrical contact cleaner that I used is that I have no residual smell after it dried. It just, yeah, that was it. Uh, so uh, that's something to keep, keep in mind. And I think the reason that the electrical contact cleaners tend not to have much of an odor is because they are being used with electronics. Uh, and the last thing people want to do is smell things. You know, you don't want a, a smell coming off your light switch or, or whatever you happen to be using it on. So uh, that there you go. That's really cool. I uh, hope that works out for you guys. Uh, it's something that, man, <laughs> two plus years later, we finally have... Um, a homegrown solution that works. Obviously, in an ideal world, Nintendo just makes better sticks or has the manufacturers make better sticks. And we don't have to worry about this issue as much. But this is something to consider as well. Like if you have an Xbox controller or a PlayStation or any sort of, you know, a Logitech controller for your PC, whatever it is, uh, one of, maybe one of those Power A controllers. And they happen to have drifting issues. Uh, if you can find a way to access the inside mechanism to do a couple sprays of this, uh, that might be a viable solution for you to consider. Uh, you know, instead of just 
of scrapping the entire thing or, ha or trying to replace a joystick, which again, some people don't want to take apart Joy-Cons. They are a little, um, I guess, complex inside. I've taken apart my Joy-Cons twice. Uh, it's not something that I'm unafraid of doing, but they're definitely uh, more difficult to take about the, than your typical game controller, uh, where everything's nicely laid out. There's a lot of fine ribbon cables inside, and um, a little fun, you know, mechanisms and, and really tiny screws that, in a normal controller, it's much easier to take apart. So, anyways. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative because I know this is an issue that millions of Switch owners are probably suffering from at some point. Um, if you if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Uh, honestly, you know, if you think this is a viable solution and it's working for you or you've used this solution, we need to spread awareness of this particular solution because it's not out there. Not very many people know about it. So share this video with your friends. Let's get this spread around to make more people aware of how to resurrect all those dead Joy-Cons they might be holding on to, all those drifting Joy-Cons out there. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.